its war of aggression against Ukraine. Malta stressed that this senseless war is a blatant violation of the United Nations Charter and international law and the stain on the very principles that we here at the United Nations are bound to uphold. We reaffirmed our commitment to the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. We underscored Ukraine's courage and resilience by defending its right to exist and by upholding the values and principles underpinned in the international rules-based order. Ukraine has the sovereign right to self-determination, including the choice of its destiny in order to ensure its safety and security. We strongly condemn the horrendous attacks against Ukrainian civilians and civilian infrastructure, including homes, hospitals, and schools, violence, including sexual and gender-based violence against women and children, and inhumane and degrading treatment. We underlined that the accountability must be our priority. Our efforts must be redoubled to be aimed to include justice for victims of atrocity crimes and sexual violence. We stressed once again, the perpetrators must be brought to justice and held to account without delay. In this regard, we called on Russia to respect the ruling of the International Court of Justice ordering an immediate suspension of military operations immediately. We expressed our deep concern for nuclear safety in Ukraine and stressed that the security and safety of all Ukrainian nuclear power plants must be guaranteed. Rhetoric on possible use of nuclear weapons is also utterly unacceptable. We underscored that Russia's aggression has serious repercussions on the rules-based international order that we have all agreed to. As members of the Security Council, our collective security depends on the common principles underpinned by the notion that might is not right. We reiterated that halting this war against Ukraine at once is the only way forward. There is no other way. As the Secretary General addressed this week, war is not the solution, war is the problem. Malta urges Russia to immediately cease all hostilities and unconditionally completely withdraw all of its forces and military equipment from the entire territory of Ukraine, stop the aggression, and abide by the UN Charter and international law. Thank you. First of all, I would like to commend the Maltese presidency and Ian personally for his principled position. February is not the most convenient month for being a president of the Security Council. It requires character, it requires full respect to the principles of this organization to the United Nations Charter. It requires stamina. And uh, Ian, you have all of this. And your government and your diplomacy has helped this presidency in a very capable way. And I appreciate what you did today to hold this meeting of the UN Security Council. Russia launched its aggression against Ukraine in 2014. And today, we are entering the 10th year of the war and the second year of the full-scale invasion. Since 2014, thousands of people died. Thousands of people, people's lives were broken because Russia invaded Ukraine. There is no other reason than Russia's invasion. And this is why it was so important to mourn and pay tribute to these victims of the aggression. And I appreciate that uh, members of the Council supported my, my request, but also everyone who was present, present in the room. I am satisfied with the outcome of this, uh, of this meeting of the Security Council. Uh, some final statements are still being delivered. We wanted uh, to show up uh, in front of you with Ian to share, uh, to share our impressions. Uh, 
Most importantly, we reiterated with this meeting that uh, Russia is in isolation. Russia's absurd interpretation of events, which is actually absurd, both are absurd and cynical, is not something that the international community is buying. And yesterday, the resolution was adopted. 141 countries stood by the UN Charter. Six countries decided to stand by Russia. That speaks for itself. Today, of course, for obvious reasons, we did not adopt the resolution, UN Security Council resolution, but the picture is the same. And we failed to adopt and even to put forward and adopt the UN Security Council resolution, we will not even considering this option, because whether someone likes it or not, but since 1991, since the night when the USSR plate was changed into Russia plate in violation of all existing rules and procedures of the United Nations, Russia usurped the seat of the permanent member of the Security Council and turned it literally into a throne of impunity. It exercised the right of veto more than any other country, preventing resolution of many conflicts and preventing the end of suffering of thousands of people. I understand this is not the most comfortable conversation this organization wants to have about how Russia made it to the UN Security Council, but it was the biggest fraud in world diplomacy in 20th century. And this problem has to be fixed. It doesn't matter how much time it takes. Uh, we will continue fighting. I have no doubts in the support of our friends, and uh, it will be only growing. The coalition in favor, in defense of the UN Charter stands, Ukraine stands. We are going to win. It's just a matter of time. And I'm confident that Putin will lose sooner than he expects. Thank you. Mr. Miller, do you have any view of the Chinese peace plan? Your president today called it not bad. It's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Have you had any contact with the Chinese in diplomacy to see about their plan? Uh, um, Councillor Wan Yi briefed me about key elements of the plan in Munich like a couple a week ago. Uh, we saw the final version of the plan last night, which was morning in Beijing. There are some elements which we agree with. There, are, there is at least one element which uh, uh, we do not, that we do not agree with uh, on, on the reluctance of sanctions. We believe that sanctions is an important tool. But uh, in total, it's an interesting document. We are looking at it. We have to examine it from A to Z and draw our conclusions. Um, it's good that China actually presented the position, the comprehensive view on, uh, uh, on, this, on this war. Um, but again, we have to make it very clear. Yesterday, 141 countries voted for the resolution that outlines the principles and the key elements of how this war should come to an end. And anything that is proposed outside of this resolution should be in line with that resolution. Thank you. Thank you.